Hello everybody, my name is Peter Jäger. I'm a metrologist at the Kistler Group. Today's video session is about something very common about calibration certificates. You possibly have seen all kinds of calibration certificates. The point is, uh, there's something new. If we are talking about calibration certificates, we are talking about uh, certificates for traceable calibrations, also called as accredited uh, calibrations. Of course, there is a norm behind that. This norm is called DIN EN ISO IAC 17025.28. And this norm renews previous norms, and there are some very major changes I want to show you and I want to explain. Of course, the contents of calibration certificates are pointed out in this norm. Some basic um, facts like the name of the customer, the place of calibration and so on, nothing new. But there's one major sentence, a little bit hidden in the text, says this version should be minimizing any possibility of misunderstanding of misuse. That means um, the people who wrote this norm and therefore um, requirements for calibration certificates wanted to make something new, to make something unique. You might say, well, what, what do I care? I mean, I'm the customer. And this norm 70025 is a norm to accredit calibration laboratories. But you are customers and instrument holders. Requirements for calibration laboratories means you can order and ask for fulfilling those requirements and therefore you should know what this norm requires. Something very new is a clear identification of the end. In former calibration certificates you probably have seen page 3 of 3, page 2 of 3. Right now um, there must be a clear identification of the end like the end of certificate. They want to prevent that additional information is implemented and put into the certificate you need to find the name and the contact information of the customer. Sounds silly, sounds very common, but um, take a look around. Even big companies have name changes so often that they change from one company name to the next company name. Please check, it's your calibration certificate and you have to insist on the proper name. Something else I want to point out is um, the date of the issue of the report in the identification of the person authorizing the report. Again, something you probably may overread is a big change. In previous calibration certificates, you could expect a signature of the laboratory. Right now, the 70025.2018 requires in section 7.8.2 the identification of the persons authorizing the report. That means you find nothing more than just a name possibly of the laboratory leader or his deputy. Uh, no signature needed anymore, it's just a written, a printed name is fine. Every calibration certificate has to have the measurement uncertainty of a measurement result presented in the same unit or in percentage. At this point, it has to be clear. The measurement uncertainty has to be a part of the calibration. And something new in this norm is uh, point E, and it says, where relevant, a statement of conformity with requirements or specification. Where relevant? Who determines what is relevant? That's you, the customer. If you want a statement of conformity, um, you can insist, and it's relevant for the laboratory, and they have to put in a statement of conformity. But what is a statement of conformity? In the easiest case, nothing more than a small sentence that says this device um, is compliant to the manufacturer's specifications. Or, very short, it's okay or it's not okay. It passed the calibration, it did not pass. Another information written in this norm is a calibration certificate or a calibration level shall not contain any recommendation of the calibration interval. Um, the interval is a part of your, the customer's, quality management systems. You are responsible for your intervals, so no calibration uh, laboratory can give you an interval. But the norm continues and says, except where this has been agreed with the customer. So if you tell the calibration laboratory, please put in an interval of 12 or 24 or other months, this would be okay. The calibration laboratory itself may not give you any interval by itself. New is the appearance of the calibration certificates. Um, on the left side you see an 
old style calibration certificate which says on top you see the name Deutsche Akkreditierungsstelle uh, or any other accreditation body and it appears that they are responsible for the calibration certificate. On the right side you see the new version. It says just Kalibrierschein or calibration certificate in English and the name of the calibration laboratory because they are the one who are responsible for the contents and the technical correctness of the calibration certificate. At the bottom of the certificate you find a sentence a certificate may not be copied without permission of the accreditation body and the laboratory. You don't need their permission. All permission you need is the permission of the calibration laboratory which we find on the right side a much shorter text which just says um, make copies or parts of that with the permission of the calibration laboratory. Okay, at this point uh, we come to the end of our today's video session. This training video was a short extract from a full day seminar Kistler offers. Please check our homepage, check for services, trainings um, and we could recommend a training seminar called Test and Measurement Equipment Management and Calibration. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.